Yeah, uh, here we go. This is the recorded session. Sorry for this morning. I don't know what's what's going wrong. Did everything is normal? But uh, I've got got a feeling that maybe a lot of people are using YouTube and uh, doing the same thing as what we are doing. And the systems are just um, maybe not not good enough. Uh, the local servers to sort of try and get this going. Um, so anyway, this is the presentation. Um, obviously, you'll have received an email to know that um, you are live. So the the unit is three one zero, and um, we're looking at uh, uh, pipelines cleaning and deposition prevention. Um, unit three one zero and the criteria is 4.6 and 4.7 so that's what we are covering with this unit okay the re remaining criteria we'll cover as well we still have to do the knowledge equation and um, yeah so that's pretty much the plan uh, this afternoon I'm gonna try and maybe it, it's working better this afternoon at three o'clock um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and uh, do it again I'll try and go through with you through the um, 308 uh, assignment and just uh, uh, talk you through you know what you need to do and what I would expect and what you can do at work okay anyway this is the uh, presentation on um, pipelines cleaning and deposition prevention um, at the end of the session you will know methods of preventing pipelines and getting clocked uh, methods of preventing pipelines getting clocked up and methods of cleaning pipelines so they are the the, the two big things which we are looking at in this unit Okay, um, first question is where are pipelines used, uh, what do they carry, and what are the issues um, pipelines have to deal with? And um, give you some answers here, um, let you maybe peruse a little bit on what the answers to these questions would be, and you can uh, uh, give an answer in your mind. Um, anyway, um, pipelines, what are they used for? So um, we've got gas, we've got uh, oil, we've got water. Um, and, and obviously they are the two big ones. Uh, pipelines are used for to try and push oil and gas uh, from A to B. Um, and at the same time, we've got the answer to what do they carry, um, oil and gas. Um, and also, um, they're normally used uh, to carry oil from places which are easily accessible. For example, uh, we've got uh, ships from Saudi Arabia, from Russia, uh, from America carrying oil. And um, it would be very costly to transport the oil using trucks. Obviously, the ships can't go inland. Even though many of the refineries are very near to the coast, um, they don't tend to be directly within the port. So um, we've got some ports. Um, the ships would um, pump the oil, gas, whatever it may be, into um temporary storage facilities and then from there it's piped into refineries as uh, they can take the gas or the oil or what, whatever it is. Uh, issues pipelines have to deal with. Um, th there are quite a few issues. The, the first one is obviously they need to be tight. There shouldn't be any leakage. Um, they need to uh, stand the tooth of time so they should be reliable and last for a reasonable amount of time and we are looking at maybe 40-50 um, years without a great deal of, um, of maintenance. They should withstand uh, earthquakes, uh, depending on where they, are, where they are. So for example, we've got the Alaska pipeline, and in Alaska we do have a lot of earthquakes. Uh, so there needs to be a little bit of resilience in there that they don't just break down, a little, little bit of flexibility so that they don't just uh, break down and start cracking uh, as soon as we've got an earthquake, but that they can absorb a little bit of shifting, moving, um, and that there's a little bit of flex in the pipeline. Uh, what else? Um, pipelines, they should be able to um, deal with temperature differences. You know, what we know is that uh, the steel is um, expanding and contracting depending on temperatures. And when you go to Alaska, you can have up to 40 centigrade in summer, in a very good summer. Uh, but in winter time, you can have minus 40 centigrade as well. So the, the temperature difference in, in the very extreme could be up to 80 degrees uh, from the lowest minus temperature to the highest uh, positive temperature. So what we find is that um, if you've got a pipeline that's several hundred kilometers long, uh, there's quite a, a difference in length with contraction, temperature contraction and expansion. 
And so somehow this this expansion and this uh, contraction needs to be absorbed by. If you imagine you've got a straight pipeline, there's no no bending or anything in it. Um, you would find that a pipeline um, at the terminal would uh, you know shift itself in and out depending on the temperature, and it would be unusable. So somehow you have to absorb absorb this. We're going to have a look at some of the pipelines in a minute, but uh, the way they do it is say they put some vents into the pipeline so that the the pipeline is allowed to uh, you know stretch and contract and the the bends can can absorb this but then the big question is what is the problem whenever you've got bends in a pipeline okay i'm gonna leave a few seconds for that too it's one big problem and um, actually two big problems but, but they are related okay let you think uh, about this maybe for about 10 seconds uh, Okay, so it's about 10 seconds. Um, I, um, I don't know, we've, I think we've covered this in the past, but when we look at pipelines, um, the biggest problem with pipelines is that um, their position takes place in bends. So if you've got like a corner or a bend, um, you will find that uh, it starts clogging up. So if there are any solids in the oil, or especially with crude oil, there's a lot of stuff in there. You don't want to be in there. And that's the reason why we've got re refineries. They would just um, um, deposit themselves in, in the bends, which are sort of built into the pipeline. Then the next problem is, which is related to that, we've got uh, cleaning uh, systems. They, they, they call them picks or scraper picks. So you shoot a pick through the uh, pipeline, and um, and obviously they have to go through these bends as well, and it makes it quite difficult uh, to to do this, or more difficult. It's not quite as easy as having a, a dead straight pipeline where you could just shoot it through from one side to the other, and um, it would all be cleaned up. So if you imagine you've got this combination of a, a scraper pick, which needs to go around the bend, and uh, you've got depositions as well. And if the depositions are a little bit uh, too much, uh, you might potentially have problems that uh, the pig can't get around the bend, which uh, probably sounds a little bit uh, weird. But uh, but anyway, we're going to look at this in a minute and you can see what those pigs look like and, and how we are dealing with pipelines. Okay, let's move on. Um, we've got examples where pipelines are used. We've got sewerage system, systems. Uh, so that's my personal experience where, where I've seen them uh, all over, pumping stations and things like that where sewage is pumped in. But again, when we look at solids and deposit depositions, uh, there are tons of them in sewage systems. And um, sort of I remember when I was working on a sewage plant, um, we had sort of ditches where the water came in before it was put to the pumping station. And, and that was just to keep the solids out, the, the pumps. Yeah. So the, um, the sewage would um, sort of run across long ditches, which, which are probably the side of a football field. And uh, so the water flow would be slowed down quite significantly. And all the, the solids, especially heavy solids like sand and um, uh, clay and, and other uh, brown bits which are in in sewage they would settle down and they wouldn't go through the pump and and the reason was that um, the pump the, the lifespan of the pump would be increased dramatically by just getting all the solids out and just pumping um, pumping water with um, very fine solids or very small solids in there um, we've got oil pipelines uh, from ship to shore so to the refinery and then we've got from oil platforms all the way to shore uh, we've got gas pipelines, and we're going to look at them as well. We've got Nord Stream or North Stream, uh, which is uh, two gas pipelines in the Baltic Sea. It's politically a very sensitive issue at the moment. Um, we've got gas pipelines between um, uh, the gas fields to shore and between towns for gas distribution. Then we've got hot water and steam pipelines. Um, and you find this within industry or... Um, when you've got a factory oil to another, if you um, don't know whether you've seen it, if you um, go through Huddersfield and you come out the um, um, the college and you turn right instead of left, you would probably all go left to go to um, to your accommodation. If you turn right and then you are going to Leeds Road, um, on the right hand side you would see. Um, you would see, I think, a Syngenta and, and things like that. And there are tons of pipelines 
uh, which you can see from the street, a lot of these pipelines, a lot of these pipes are used for hot steam. So there's steam, a high pressure and low pressure steam from what I was told, which is moved around the, the factory for various purposes. Um, obviously, we've got pipelines in between terminals and then we've got them inside and outside factories, like you can see uh, when you go down Leeds Road in, in Huddersfield. Okay, what do pipelines carry? Um, we've got a whole a lot of stuff. We've got oil, gas, water, sludge, steam, petrol, and then we've got chemicals as well. And straight away, we've got a problem. Some chemicals can be corrosive, uh, acidic, or explosive as well. Yeah. So we have to deal with that. So if you've got a corrosive pipeline, and very often inside the pipeline, or not a corrosive pipeline, a pipeline carrying corrosive material, or acidic material, we might have a coating inside the pipeline to protect the pipeline itself yeah. and um, to um, you know increase the lifespan of the the pipeline okay pipeline issues we've got uh, thermal expansion so that's uh, a big problem again you can see the picture here we've got a straight pipeline i think it's the alaska pipeline there's uh, somebody just walking along it and um, and again, if it's straight all the way through, we would have a massive problem because the pipeline would just grow and uh, shrink for uh, meters, you know, even during a day, during normal temperature variations throughout the day. We've got issues with corrosion. Um, we've got uh, subterranean pipelines, so pipelines which are buried in the ground. And uh, there we've got earth movement and leaks and things like that. And and again, if the earth moves, yeah, if there's movement in the earth due to, um, you know, an earthquake or something like that, the problem is that uh, leaks may not be um, uh, discovered until uh, a lot of damage has been done, you know, and, and maybe oil or whatever it is has leaked into the groundwater, the water table. We've got submarine pipelines, and this is like the North Stream, um, um, North Stream 1 and 2, which is in, in, in the Baltic Sea. Um, and, um, again, they're vulnerable, you know, if a ship, um, sinks or, um, we've had stories in the past. I mean, I haven't heard anything recently, but that submarines have been accidentally, uh, running into, into sub submarine, um, structures and, and cause a lot of damage. So again, leaks is a problem if it's a submarine pipeline. So if something comes out, it could uh, pollute the, uh, marine environment. Uh, other issues are residue built up over time. So if you've got crude oil, there's a lot of uh, stuff in there which you don't really want, and refineries normally take it out. Um, there, there's there are lots of things which would over time uh, potentially build up inside a pipeline. Um, we've got contamination of pumped medium. So if you pump something, you you might pick up contamination in there. Uh, we've got clogging. We've got hot liquid and gases cooling down which again, you know, stuff that's uh, normally suspended in the liquid uh, would no longer be suspended and it might settle down somewhere in the pipeline. Uh, deposition of impurities or materials, and then we've got frost as well. So if you've got water, uh, interesting as well, if water is moving and um, um, uh, it takes a lot more um uh, minus temperatures to try and or to, to freeze it up so moving water is very hard to freeze but if it is stationary it doesn't take a long time for it to to freeze up uh, obviously gas and um, oil and other substances it uh, takes a lot longer to 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 freeze but the viscosity changes as oil freezes up yeah so viscosity gets thicker um, as the temperature goes down uh, and again when you imagine we've got a pipeline in, in alaska and this pipeline um uh, runs over hundreds of kilometers, so it's it's very hard to keep uh, keep the temperature up, and the amount of energy used to uh, keep the oil hot uh, will be quite substantial. Uh, I've got a couple of pictures here of different pipelines, and um, I've just sort of put them up here so you can see them. Uh, just a few more pictures. This is in in the UK. I thought it might be interesting to um, to put it up. Um, not sure whether you can see this here. There's actually um, a fuel terminal near Huddersfield. It's uh, in a place called Peniston, uh, on the way to Sheffield, on Sheffield Road, just off Sheffield Road before you hit, um, I think the town is called Thurgoland. And so you, you, you go towards Peniston and um, you, would, you would see the pipeline. When I look on here, 
Uh, hope the mouse is getting through. I think it could be where the mouse is right now. That that could be the the terminal. Uh, this is a bit further down. That would be Sheffield somewhere. And uh, and I mean you can see this goes right from the refinery, which is at Killingholm. Um, and so the the fuel is pumped through, and you you get like you see tankers from all different petrol stations picking up the petrol pretty much from the same place. Yeah. So you think uh, you know if you've got like. Um, BP or or jet or whatever fuel it is, um, it seems to come from the same place anyway. So I'm not quite sure whether they've got like different grades of fuel or whatever, but uh, it's pretty much all the same. So, but anyway, you can see this from the main road, and it's like all these installations are well secured, and uh, it's it's hard to go anywhere near it, and they obviously it's highly flammable, and uh, uh, they're well protected. But it gives you an idea that, that there's a pipeline network in the UK and there are sort of few terminals all over the place um, for um, uh, tankers to pick up the fuel and then to supply the petrol stations nearby. Okay, um, this is the Alaska pipelines and it's uh, the length is about 800 miles. Uh, to give you an idea, from um, London to, to Huddersfield is about uh, 180, maybe 200 miles. So four times the distance. Uh, the diameter is about 1.2 meters of the pipeline. So you can see a picture here. So that's a reindeer. And, and there you've got the pipeline. And they've decided to not bury the pipeline, but to keep it keep it on stilts, to keep it above uh, above the, um, the floor. And I understand that's to do with maintenance and inspection. So uh, they can check whether there's any, da any damage to the pipeline. Um, and here on the map, you can see where, you know, all the way to, to the pipeline. You've got like different pumping stations. So it goes to first one, second one. Uh, how many have you got? We've got about 12. Um, so it gives you a rough idea. So it's about every, um, every 100 kilometers, roughly, uh, you've got a pumping station. And um, so you can pump the stuff through, the fuel through. Uh, right at the north of Alaska, there's an oil field here. And, uh, and that's where, where they extract all the oil from and where they put it in. Uh, fascinating um, construction. And, and obviously, they've got all the problems uh, we were just talking about there as well. They've got the temperature issue, the expansion issue. It's crude oil. I, I'm told that the oil they uh, extract from Alaska is very, um, what's the term? Not dirty, but um, the grade is not very good. Okay, It needs a lot of refining to try and make it usable so um it's not the top-notch stuff but uh um, very very um a lot of um um sort of uh, things in there which need to be filtered out yeah a couple of pictures for the alaska pipeline and, and you can see the bands they've placed in there and um, these are the so-called expansion bands you can see as well it's almost like on a slider, those bends are there. So if the pipe starts to expanding, it allows those bends to, uh, you know, become a bit bigger and a bit smaller. Yeah. You can also see that, uh, we're going to look at those picks in a minute, that those the bends are not very sharp. They are not sort of 90 degree angles, but they it's like a snake. It's coiling sort of across the, um, across the floor. Uh, and again, this is so that the cleaning, the, the scraper pick, can go through. If it were a 90 degree bend, it would almost be impossible for the thing to go through. Uh, you can see as well bridges they've got here. And it's quite a big project. Uh, interesting as well, you've got an inspection path right next to it. So uh, if there's a problem, somebody can just go along and uh, try and fix it. And bearing in mind there's big money involved with that. Um, oil production is, is very, uh, very important, obviously, for America. And um, there's a lot of money involved with that. So they, um, again, when you look at the, um, just let me go back to um, to the pipeline. I'm not sure whether this is Anchorage over there, uh, but you can see there's a port there, and this is where the tankers can pick up the oil. And right up in the north, it's um, frozen for most part of the year, so it's not. Uh, open to navigation, whereas uh, in the southern part of Alaska, it's pretty much the sea is open for most of the year, so it's possible to pick up the oil um, from 
near Anchorage. I'm not sure whether that's Anchorage, but it's one terminal. It's obviously a terminal down there for, for boats to, for ships to pick up the oil. This is the scraper pick I was talking about before, and you can see what it looks like. So you've got um, um, the um, um, bits of rubber which scrape against the, the edge of the pipe to pick up any solids. And, um, and, and you can see at the back as well. So at the back you would have oil, which would be, uh, you know, using force, um, would push this uh, scraper pick ahead. And then it would go from one pumping station to another pumping station. And then a pumping station that would probably, uh, you know, take it out and uh, clean it up and then, you know, put it back in again to the next pumping station. Um, so that's the, the so-called scraper pick to just clear and clean the pipes. There are a few more variations of those scraper picks and we're going to look at them in a minute. Right, this is the next big pipeline project. And... Um, uh, we've got Russia, you can see this here, so all the, the bits here, there's Moscow, and Russia is one of the biggest energy providers in the world now, uh, in competition with Saudi Arabia, and I think America, the USA, they pretty much can supply their own needs, but Europe, for example, is desperately depending uh, de depending on Russia. Um, politically, it's a very hot iron. So we had the Soviet Union before, and it wasn't that much of a problem. So all these countries here, so the Ukraine, Belarus, we've got the um, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia up there. All these countries, they um, they were pretty much part of the Soviet Union. So uh, it wasn't that much of a problem to pump uh, gas and oil into into Europe. Uh, using pipelines, which is you know far better, faster, more efficient than shipping, um, and then the Soviet Union stopped existing, and we had like nation states, and suddenly we've got those two contenders. Here. We've got the Ukraine, and we've got Russia, and you can see that there are uh, two pipelines from Russia, actually three pipelines, going right through the Ukraine, and politically it's a very hot iron, and uh, the reason is the Ukraine says. Um, we want cheap gas, otherwise we don't give you access to our pipelines. And Russia, Russia says, no, we're not going to give you cheap gas. Uh, you have aligned yourself with Europe. You are trying to align yourself with Europe. We are not giving you cheap gas anymore. Then the Ukraine says, okay, we're going to stop you flowing to Europe. And then you can't make any money. And, um, and so there's all this uh, political um, uh, tension between Russia and the Ukraine. Um, and then the, the, obviously the only other way out is um, the pipeline through uh, through Bella Russia, through White Russia, and um, the relationship between Russia and Be Bella Russia or Belorussia is a lot better, and that that don't seem to be that many problems. But the the throughput is not quite as uh, efficient, you know? so they they were struggling, and the problem for Europe was if uh, the Ukraine says no or what's been happening in the past as well, that the Ukraine allegedly was uh, siphoning off gas for their own needs. And um, if, if that, that is what was happening, then less gas was arriving in Europe and the Russians were still charging Europe. And so you had all this hiccup going on between the countries and all the tension between the countries. So I'm sure you're aware of that Russia has been attacking the Ukraine and um, there's right at the back, if you've watched the mouse, there's a so-called Donetsk Republic, which is just basically a Russian takeover. Uh, I've got friends in um, in the Ukraine, and so got all the inside stories. But um, pretty much a lot of Russians um, um, from the Russian army, not in Russian uniforms, uh, started uh, going into the Donetsk region and pretty much taking over the uh, the place. And um, a lot of Ukrainians or Donetsk people, they did flee either to Russia or to the Ukraine, and I've, I've met some of them personally. And it's, it's quite, it's a very politically, a very tense situation between those two countries. And, um, uh, and they're not, not the best of friends now. Uh, the worst thing is that when you go look at the Ukraine, you, you draw a line right in the middle of the Ukraine to the left hand side. People speak Ukrainian, and to the right hand side, people speak Russian. And still, uh, their identity is, is Ukrainian, even though their mother tongue is, is Russia, Russian. So a lot of tension there, but the problem is gas doesn't get through to Europe if things go um, tipsy-turvy, yeah, and there's a big problem. And so Germany has decided uh, to 
uh, together with Russia, to build a pipeline through the Baltic Sea, and not just one, but two pipelines. The first one is being built, and the second one, I think, is about to get finished. And, um, and uh, you can see this pipeline will supply all of Europe with, uh, with gas, even going all the way to Britain. So there's gas uh, coming through from Russia, through Germany to Britain. America isn't very happy about it because uh, it means if uh, Russia gets ever angry with Europe, all they need to say, right, we're going to stop the gas and um, Europe will be freezing. And, and so they, they reckon there's a very strong dependency on Russian gas. So in return, a gas terminal is being built in, um, in Holland and places like, um, you know, in the, the, the sea for American gas to be liquef liquefied and to be shipped over um, so that uh, there can be an alternative to Russian gas as well. So there's a lot of politics going into this and you can see how important pipelines become and why it is important to keep pipelines going and what happens if they don't go and, and the result is that people start freezing because there's no local production and um, gas may be a lot more harder to transport than, than oil. Okay, move on. This is what uh, the project looks like. So these are the pipes. Um, th these are workers on the ships and these are the platforms where the pipeline is being built. And uh, yeah, you can see this here. There's a lot of other stuff going on as well. There's a really interesting project. They found a massive uh, gas field in Israel of all places, you know, very, and the gas, they, they reckon it's um, enough gas to supply Europe for the next hundred years and longer. So a massive gas field, and they're now building a pipeline from, from Israel through the Mediterranean uh, all the way through to Greece, and then uh, from Greece supply the EU with uh, gas, which will be a massive competition to Russia. So you can straight away see the tension which may be coming up in the future and how you know natural resources might be a uh, cause for war um, in the future. But uh, again, pipelines very important. It's um, um, happening uh, all over the world now, and um, and uh, and it's all to get resources to where the people are. And very often the resources are not there where people are living, but they are a long way away, like in Siberia or in Israel, in the Mediterranean, in some of the, the gas fields out there. Okay, let's move on. Um, enough of politics. And we're going to talk about uh, problems of deposition. Um, there are temperature differentials which cause solids to stick to pipe walls. There's sometimes a lack of flow. So when um, the pumps stop for a moment and the oil is um, stationary in the pipe, depositions can um, happen quite easily. So stuff can settle down, stick to the walls and, uh, and then um, stay there you know, and cause more depositions later on. Bends in the pipes can cause solids to collect, and then we've got roughness or obstacles inside the pipe which uh, generate more deposition. Um, so stuff gets clogged up. Uh, you can see a pipe here where depositions have happened, so that is the rim of the pipe, and um, there are more and more deposits sort of going through, going through. A common problem in domestic pipes, water pipes, is limescale. Limescale building up on the inside and uh, and causing problems. In the past, it was actually a desired effect. We had lead pipes. Lead is not very good. So if you pump water through lead pipes, um, the um, um, the health impact is quite significant. But uh, it doesn't take a long time for limescale to cover the lead walls. And uh, once they are all covered with limescale, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, there's very little lead that's coming through uh, unless the pipe is disturbed. If the pipe is not disturbed, it's very little lead that comes through and there's not much of a of a health issue anymore. Okay, uh, problem of deposition. The foreign objects and liquid gas, uh, there's chemical deposition, uh, chemicals which settle down, pipeline corrosion, okay, which may be a result as well, and there's deposition due to cooling and bends and flow breaks. So we talked about this. So now we're going to look at the methods of preventing deposition. And, and the main method is to, to heat the pipe. Yeah, that's all they do. It's just to heat up the pipe. And to heat them up, we've got um, three methods. We've got steam tracing. So tracing means to, to follow the pipe. 
So we've got like a steam pipe on the outside, which generates a lot of heat. Then we've got some sort of jacket which goes around the pipe to distribute the pipe, the heat evenly throughout the pipe. Uh, and then we've got electrical tracing and steam water jacket tracing. So we put like a steam water jacket around it, blow steam into it, then it heats up the pipe. And that is a method to, uh, to keep it warm, which is nice and good for short distances, but gets horrendously expensive if you do it over long distances. Okay, this is what tracers look like. So you've got a little pipe, you can see here, uh, if you follow the mouse, and then you've got like a, a jacket all the way around it. And that pipe can either be um, um, just like a, a, a steam pipe um, or a hot water pipe, uh, where hot water pipe is hot water is pumped through, um, or something else. Yeah. Okay, steam tracing. So you can see this here. You've got thermal insulation, and then uh, you've got your uh, pipe going through the insulation, and the insulation will assure that. Um, First of all, you don't lose too much heat, and then secondly, your um, your pipes are uh, the heat is going to be evenly distributed. It's very important. Okay, electrical tracing. How do you think it works with electrical tracing? Um, how do you do it? Uh, I leave you to think about it more. A few seconds. Okay. Um, Let's have a look. Next slide. Um, that's pretty much how it's done. So you've got a power source, you've got uh, a heating element, which goes all the way along the pipe. And um, <clears throat> and this is meant to, to heat up the pipe. Yeah? And you can see this here as well. So you've got like um, these pipes which go all the way around. Yeah. And uh, then you would normally put a jacket around it to make sure <coughs> that the heat goes into the pipe and not... Um, not outside the pipe, and you don't lose too much heat. Okay. Again, I mean, it's it's expensive. I don't want to know how much how much power you need to um, to do an effective um, heat tracing using uh, electrical wires. Uh, we've got a, <clears throat> a steam water jacket. That's what they look like. Yeah. So there's. Uh, either hot steam or hot water pumped through it, and um, that's the way it works. And then we've got a, lot of, a few more examples of deposition. I mean, this is what pipes look like when uh, they're not treated. There's still some stuff going through, but obviously the volume is going to get less and less and less. Um, and now we're going to look at uh, cleaning pipes. Uh, so we're going to look at the pick. Uh, first one you can see here is you've still got those... Um, uh, those rings, those plastic rings or rubber rings which, which scrape against the side of the pipe. But here you've also got a, a set of brushes which are spring-loaded. So as, a, as this pick, the, 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 the scraping pick, scraper pick or cleaning pick is pushed through the pipe. You've got those brushes which, um, which go on the side of the pipe to try and um, you know, pick up any, any dirt that's there and scrub it, scrub it clean. Um, got one here which uses bushes brushes and then we've also got other methods there's a method where you use um, chemicals to try and get any deposition any clocked up stuff away from the pipe walls um, so uh, again you know chemicals are quite expensive and then if it's a food product you don't want any dangerous chemicals in there which is piped through or if it's uh, oil or something uh, again you don't want to contaminate the oil uh, in any way so uh, but there are cleaning products, uh, solvents used to, to clean up pipes. There's also a high pressure jet, um, which is ideal for shorter pipe lengths. So you um, put the high pressure jet through the pipe and you uh, clean it out that way. Um, right. And we are coming to the end. What is uh, deposition in pipes? First question. Uh, I'll count to 10 and then I'll move on. Okay, so that's um, basically pipes are getting clogged up, dirt's sticking to the sides of the pipe on the inside, and um, you know over time it's uh, uh, pipes are or pipe lamps are less efficient because you don't uh, you're not able to maintain uh, flow rates with a certain amount of pressure due to the diameter shrinking over time. 
Okay, next question is what causes deposition? I'm going to count to 10. Um, yeah, uh, we've got temperature differences. We've got um, uh, slow flow rates, you know, the flow slowing down. Uh, we've got Benson pipes. You know, all this stuff causes depositions. And again, we need the Benson pipes for thermal expansion to deal with that, to absorb any thermal expansion. Um, name two methods for, to stop uh, deposition from happening. Um, okay, one of them is tracing, uh, which is just uh, putting something on the side of the pipe to heat it up. And um, um, the other one is um, keeping flow rates up. Yeah. Uh, two methods to clean pipes. Count to 10. Um, one of them is a scraper pick. So you send a scraper pick through and uh, the other one is um, uh, a high jet, jet washing, jet cleaning. Uh, so you've got like a high jet, a high powered jet, which is pushed through the pipes to, to clean them up, which is obviously only suitable for shorter length of pipes. Okay, and that leads us right to the end of the, um, the session. We looked at um, pipelines and uh, different materials they carry. Um, depending on the material pumped into pipelines, they can get clogged up. Yeah? And again, that's a big problem. And heating the pipeline will minimize any deposition, so that's minimizing any clogging up. And depositions can be removed with uh, scraper pigs. Yeah? So not real pigs, real animals, but uh, things which you stick in the pipeline and they, they scrape on the sides of the, uh, the pipe and get rid of any deposits and uh, possibly solvents uh, or high pressure water jets. Okay, and that's the presentation. Hope you did enjoy this. Um, we'll have to do Benoni's equation, and then I just need to check whether we missed anything out on the uh, on the criteria points. I think we've covered most of it. Um, we're going to do the exam prep, um, the knowledge nuggets, uh, and, and then we are pretty much done with this unit. Okay, um, talk to you later. Bye-bye.